Mm-hmm. All right, what's step six? And then we, um, we use the uh, formula for mm-hmm. torque, which is the torque equals um, the force. Yeah, f- oh, equals the, f- the force times the, um, oh, sorry, okay. radius perpendicular. R perpendicular. Probably best not to R think of that as radius. Okay. I mean, not radius, it's distance. So now we're going to figure out the distance magnitude point. of the torque. Well, that's the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of R perpendicular. Uh, and as you guys mm-hmm. know, I like to use dots to emphasize when a variable stands for a magnitude. So I'll use the dots here to emphasize that okay. these are uh, help to help us just find the magnitude. Okay, so okay. Uh, so what's the calculation that we would do here now then? 490 times 2.5. That's right. We know that the force is 490. Uh, that's the weight, and we got the 2.5. So let's do that calculation, and we get 1225, which we already know is negative. Good. D- uh, do you guys remember what the, or can you figure out what the units should be for that? Oh my gosh, I know what it is. Hold on, <laughs> it's um newton meter. Okay, so the, the okay. using the steps on the right. Did you hear my last question? That's right. So yeah. we were not given any angle for the weight of the boom. Okay. All right. When we t- start doing the tension, then we might use the left-hand approach because for the tension we were given an angle. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, actually, in this case, it really doesn't make much difference whether you use the left or the right-hand approach because R and R perpendicular are the same. If you draw to the the line of the force, that's the same as drawing to the point of application in this case. One sec. So. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so what, let's see. Let me uh, catch up with you. So we have the torque of the beam is negative 12, uh, 2, 5. So let me uh, write that down here. So the torque from the beam is negative 1, 2, 2, 5. Okay. Uh, all right. So you guys correctly figured out uh, that torque. That's good. Was it positive or negative? It was um, negative. Because, again, that's a clockwise torque. If this was going to rotate, the sign would make us rotate clockwise. Okay, so let's put and that it's in. Um, mm-hmm. So it's not, it, you got negative 1960 Newton? No, that's the weight. Oh, the weight. Okay, so you did. I made okay, a mistake. Let me fix that. Yeah. So, uh, so let's see. Our torque Some here stuff. is going to be negative. Now, the distance here was the 5 meters, right? Right. The distance was the 5 meters, and the weight was the 1960. So I think you guys already calculated that that torque was 9,800. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, and the units for that are? Newton meters. Right. Okay, so let's put that in our main picture. So here we have the torque from the sign negative 9,800 Newton meters. All right. Okay, so we've gotten that that torque was negative uh, 88, uh, negative 9,800 newtons. So we're done with the torques from the two weights, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, then what? So then we need to take the torques of the hinges into account. The hinge has a force in the x direction. Right. Going now that's going to gonna be a little bit different or a little bit tricky. So let's take our time on that and try to figure that okay. out. Okay, so let's go through those steps. So we've already got the force. And where's the pivot again? It's at the um, hinge, the center of the hinge. Yeah, so I guess we could focus on, say, um, the X force from the hinge. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's see. Um, so what would our perpendicular be? It's a little bit of a trick question here. Yeah, it is. Um, the hinge is x, the r perpendicular. Oh, it would be... Uh, the hinge well, the, is the... Um, the hinge, yeah, going in the same direction as... As its own fo- as weight fo- fo- on the force or whatever. Right? Well, if there would be a, 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 a R perpendicular, it'd have to be perpendicular to the force of the hinge, right? Because you asked for So let's R, try to R use our basic uh, approach again. Where, where, is the, where is the R perpendicular vector? Where is it supposed to start? The R perpendicular vector is supposed to be... In the center of the mass. The axis of... It's the, the R perpendicular is supposed to be from the axis of rotation. That's right. So it starts at the axis of rotation. 
It starts at the axis of rotation. And where does it go to? Well, since we've got an... See, just in general, more, just in general, where does it go oh, through? It goes to the line of okay, the force, it's right? Gonna go to, it's going to go to the line of the force, yes. Right. Now, the thing that's making this so tricky here got, is that the line of the force is going through the axis of rotation, right? The line of this force is already through the axis of rotation, right? Um, Can you the see line how the, of the so Yeah. Can you see how the line so of the, the hinge force is already going through the axis of rotation? Oh, 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 okay. The, the, yes, because it's going right through that pivot point That's of the right. hinge. That's right. So remember okay. that the, the r perpendicular vector here is supposed to start at the axis, which is at this point, uh -huh. and it's supposed to go through the line of the yep. force, which is also at this point. So how long is r at perpendicular? So it's zero. Yeah, that was why I said this is a little bit tricky. In a sense, this is the easiest one. But somehow, sometimes the easiest case can be the hardest case. So, um, and this is one case where we would not actually draw our perpendicular. You can't draw it because you can't draw a vector of zero. W once you think about this right, it's kind of common sense. Um, the hinge force is being applied to, to the pivot, right? right? The hinge force is being applied to the pivot because the pivot is the hinge. Well, so how, what's the okay. distance? What's the distance then between the pivot and the force? The distance is zero. Right. Zero. Okay. So anytime you okay. have a force that's being applied um, to the pivot, and I, I keep saying pivot and axis of rotation, remember that the pivot is just really another word for the axis of rotation. The pivot and the axis right. of rotation are the same point, right? Well, anytime you have yeah. a, uh, anytime you have a force that's applied to the pivot, then its r and its r perpendicular are zero, uh, because if you draw a vector from the pivot to the force, um, th those are both in the same place. If the force is in the same place as the pivot. Um, then the, the r or the r perpendicular vectors would both be zero. Okay. Okay. So, um, so what's the torque from that hinge force? The torque is zero from the hinge force. What about for hinge force uh, y? Uh, hinge force x. Um, the torque for the hinge force, I would think, that actually, for the, X, the same situation is going to be with the hinge force y. That's right. Because yeah. the point of pivot is, is um, the center of the the center of the, the center of the pivot, the um, force is going to go right through the center on Y as well. So, the, yeah, the best way to describe that is that uh, hinge force Y is also being applied to the pivot point. Hinge force to Y is also being applied yeah. to the pivot point because that, that's the hinge. So what's the distance between the pivot and the force? Well, there is no distance. Again, the distance is zero. It doesn't matter whether you use the R method or the R perpendicular method. They're both going to be zero um, in this case. Um, so anytime you have a force that's applied to your pivot, it doesn't cause any torque. So that would also give us a torque of zero. Maybe it would be easier if we just used our common sense and not used the math. Um, we talked about this, I think, in an earlier session. Um, we know that if you, um, so here's a pen. If this pen is going to rotate, it's going to rotate around my thumb. So my thumb is like the pivot. Well, if I push over here, I can cause a torque and make it rotate. But if I push right here, I can't make the pen rotate, right? You can't make something rotate right. by pushing right at the pivot. Maybe this is clear if you just use the common sense and don't focus so much on the math. So again, the common sense of the math both tell us that if the force is pushing right at the pivot, it can't cause a torque. And that's what we have here. These hinge forces are pushing right at the pivot because the hinge is the pivot, so they can't cause a torque. So the torque from the hinge is zero. Okay? Right. So I can okay. go back here and say the torque from the hinge is zero. And that, that goes for both the y and the x components. It doesn't matter whether you think about the x or the y components. Both of them have a torque of zero. OK. okay. Um, so that as is very often going to happen. Um, very often you're going to have a case where um, some of the forces are applied to the pivot so that they don't cause any torque. I think we saw that in our last session where we were talking about um, the normal force from the fulcrum. Uh, and we saw that that the didn't cause, uh, when we did that teeter-totter, we saw that the normal yeah. force from the fulcrum wasn't going to cause a torque because the fulcrum was the pivot. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so anyway, um, so as a general rule that you might want to have in your notes, if the force is applied to the pivot, then it can't cause a torque. If the force is applied okay. to the pivot, it can't cause a torque because R and R perpendicular would both be zero. Okay. Now let's step back here for a second then. Remember that one of, our, one of our early steps had to be to choose the pivot point, right? We had to choose the point that we yes. were going to pivot around. And the reason I, I, I said we would choose this as the pivot because if we re, um, Now, I said it was a little bit weird to talk about a pivot here because the object isn't really going to rotate, right? This object isn't really going to rotate. Right. Um, 
it right. turn, uh, so it turns out, so obviously if an object is rotating, the pivot is the point that it's rotating around. If an object is rotating, then the pivot is the point that it's rotating around. But what about for a statics problem? If, if, if the object is not rotating, then the pivot is any point that's convenient for you. So I say that again, for a statics problem, when the object is not rotating, you can choose any point that's convenient as the pivot. As long as you're consistent and use that for the whole problem. You can choose any point that's convenient for the pivot uh, because the object's not really going to rotate anyway. So if we're going to imagine that um, a pivot point, uh, you can pick any point that's convenient. So we could have picked any point on this whole situation here as the pivot. So why did we choose this point? Well, this was the most convenient because it made uh, because if we choose this as the pivot, we don't need to worry about the torques from the two hinge forces.